Hello and welcome to the Consist of the Kirk YouTube channel. I'm your host for this video, Reverend Jake Zabel, the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. On today's video, I wanted to talk about the topic of Mary's Levitical heritage. Is the Virgin Mary a Levite? Is Jesus Christ a Levite? And well, we'll talk about this when we get to later on in the sermon about what the Gospel of Luke says. But the reason I want to talk about this is to focus our attention onto the prophecy and promise given in Jeremiah 33 regarding the branch of righteousness. In Jeremiah 33 verses 17 to 18, God promises that David shall never lack a man to sit on his throne, and the Levitical priest shall never lack a man to make offering and sacrifice in the presence of the Lord for all time. Verses 19-21, to 21, the Lord also declares that unless he breaks his covenant with the day and his covenant with the night, then he, shall, then he cannot break his covenant with David and the Levites. That is to say, as long as the sun and the moon continue in their normal course, the promise that God made to David and the Levites remains. Now, the Davidic covenant was made in 2 Samuel 7.13, in which God promised David that God would raise up from him an offspring who would sit, who would build a house for the Lord, and the Lord would establish the throne of his kingdom forever. The Levitical covenant was made in Numbers 25.13, in which God promised Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, of the tribe of Levite, that for him and his descendants there would be a perpetual priesthood. Thus, there would forever be a priest who would be descended from Phineas. We all know that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant. He is the righteous branch that sprouts from David. In Matthew's Gospel, we are given a genealogy of Jesus from David to Joseph the carpenter via David's son Solomon. Jesus was only adopted by Joseph and was only considered the son of Joseph by law. But legally, Jesus was considered the descendant of David via Solomon. However, in Luke's Gospel, we are also given a genealogy from David to Joseph via David's son, Nathan. Not only is this a different son of David, but these are two entirely different lists of names. Now, the early church fathers taught that the genealogy of Luke's Gospel is actually the genealogy of Mary and not of Joseph. The earliest recorded proposal for this view that we have it comes from John of Damascus in the 600s. Thus, according to Luke 3, 23-31, Jesus' mother Mary, from whence Jesus gets his human flesh, was descended from David via his son Nathan, another son of David's wife Bathsheba. Thus, Mary was a Judite. Thus, Jesus is both legally and biologically descended from David. In addition, Joseph the carpenter is born from the king line, making him the rightful heir to the throne of David. With Joseph's death, this claim was then passed on to his legal son, Jesus, who is then the rightful heir to the throne of David. Jesus then takes on the title of King of the Jews and establishes a kingdom not of this world, an everlasting kingdom. Thus the throne of David forevermore has a king on the throne. Jesus also builds a house for the Lord in the Incarnation. For John 1.14 tells us that the word of God tabernacled amongst us in the flesh of Jesus. And in John 2.21, Jesus calls his body, body the temple of the Lord. But what about the promise to Phineas and the perpetual Levitical priesthood? In Zechariah 6 verses 12 to 13, it states that the branch, so Jesus the Messiah, shall rebuild the temple of the Lord and shall bear royal honor and sit on the throne of Israel and that the branch shall be a priest. In John 2, Jesus declared that if the temple of his body was destroyed, he would rebuild it in three days, which happened in the resurrection. Jesus is also called our great high priest, who has made the everlasting sacrifice by his death on the cross. Psalm 110.4 promises that the Messiah will be a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, a promise which the book of Hebrews applies to Jesus as the great high priest. By being a priest in the order of Melchizedek, Jesus fulfills the prophecy of Zechariah and the branch shall serve as a priest. But what about the promise to the Levites and the promise of a Levitical priesthood? No one could say that Jesus is the priest forever and that Israel is not lacking a man to serve as a priest forever. But God gave a promise to the Levites specifically to Phinehas and his descendants that he would have a perpetual priesthood. And in Jeremiah 33.21, that the covenant is made with the Levites. The answer to this then is Mary's Levitical heritage. According to Luke 1.5, Elizabeth was a Levite, descended from Aaron. Elizabeth was a Levite married to Zechariah, a Levite. 
What is significant about that is that Mary and Elizabeth are cousins. Thus, if Elizabeth is a Levite, then Mary must also have some Levitical blood. The church father, Gregory of Nazianzus, taught that he was the son of a virgin from Mary, a Levite, for Mary was from the blood of Aaron. And again, Gregory writes, in reference to Elizabeth as Mary kinswoman, the angel refers to Mary's relationship to the tribe of Aaron, attributing to her a priestly lineage. Gregory taught that Jesus was of the house of David legally via Joseph, but of the house of Aaron biologically via Mary. This would make Jesus legally the Davidic heir and biologically a Levitical priest. In this, Jesus fulfills Jeremiah 33 as both the everlasting Davidic king and the everlasting Levitical priest. However, Hebrews 7, 11 to 17 speaks of Jesus belonging to the order of Melchizedek, and verse 11 expressly says that Jesus was not a priest according to Aaron. Verse 14 says that it is evidence that Jesus was descended from Judah. And verse 16 says that Jesus was a priest not according to the legal requirement concerning physical descent. Thus, Jesus was not considered a Levitical priest, and if Jesus is not a Levite by blood, then Mary cannot be a Levite by blood. One solution to this is that according to the Old Testament, a person's tribe was dependent on their father's lineage. Today, Jews base their lineage on their mother, but this is a later Talmudic invention. According to Numbers 1-2, the children of Israel were recorded according to their father's house. Thus, since Jesus was legally Joseph's son, he was legally a Judite and not legally valid for the Levitical priesthood. Thus, Jesus could still be legally descended from David, but biologically descended from Aaron. However, we then return to the problem with the two genealogies of Jesus in Matthew and Luke. These two genealogies are clearly talking about two different individuals. For one is descended from David via Solomon, and the other is descended from David via Nathan. Thus, either scripture must be in error, or one of the genealogies relates to Mary. And since Jesus would have received the royal claim from Joseph, his, his father, and not from Mary, then the simplest answer is that Matthew's genealogy is the genealogy of Joseph, and thus Luke's genealogy is the genealogy of Mary. Thus, Jesus would be a Judite both legally and biologically. Hence why later church fathers, like John of Damascus, disagreed with Gregory of Nazianzus that Mary was a biological Levite. Gregory taught that Mary was from the tribe of Levite, but John of Damascus considered Mary to be from the tribe of Judah. And later church fathers, after John of Damascus, would continue to promote this teaching that Mary was from the tribe of Judah and not from the tribe of Levite. However, the fact does remain that Mary and Elizabeth were cousins and that Elizabeth was a Levite. Now, it is possible that Elizabeth had a Levite father and a Judite mother, but church tradition actually says it is Mary who had a Judite father and a Levite mother. Some church fathers, generally those after John of Damascus, taught that Mary's mother, Anna, a woman who's not actually ever mentioned in the Bible or only mentioned in church tradition, but these church fathers taught that Anna was a Levite descended from Aaron via Phineas, and that Mary is related to Elizabeth on her mother's side of the family tree. Thus, according to these church fathers, Jesus was legally a Judite and biologically half Judite, half Levite, since Jesus gets his flesh from, solely from Mary, and Mary is half Judite, half Levite. It was then argued from these church fathers that this was sufficient to fulfill the prophecy of Jeremiah 33 and the Levitical covenant made with Phineas. For even though Jesus never served as a Levitical priest, he still possessed Levitical blood, particularly blood descent, um, particularly Jesus was believed to be descended from Phineas. In this sense, Jesus was considered a biological descendant of Phineas, who through the order of Melchizedek served as a priest, and Jesus will serve as a priest forevermore. Thus, Jesus is a descendant of Phineas who served as a perpetual priest, and therefore the Levitical priests will never lack a man to offer up offerings and sacrifices for all time. 
So essentially, Jesus didn't get to be a priest because of his Levitical blood. He got to be a priest because of the order of Melchizedek. But that Jesus was still a priest and he still possessed the blood of Phineas. Thus, one of Phineas's descendants would still be a perpetual priest, thus fulfilling God's promise to Phineas back in the book of Numbers. Now, one last thing that I just wanted to mention here about Jeremiah 33 is that in verse uh, 22, God promised David and the Levites that their seed would be like the stars of heaven and the sands of the sea without number. This promise of God is very similar to the covenant that God had with Abraham about Abraham's seed being without number, outnumbering the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. Now, the Abrahamic covenant is fulfilled through the mystical union of Christ and his church. Paul writes in Romans 4 that all who have the faith of Abraham are considered sons of Abraham. Thus, all believers are now sons of Abraham, and thus Abraham is the father of many nations, and his seed outnumbers the stars. Similarly, Jesus is the seed of David and of Levi. Jesus is the king of David's throne and the priest who serves before God. Through the mystical union, all Christians are made one with Christ, and thus we too are sons of David and sons of Levi. Thus all Christians are kings and priests. As St. Peter says in 1 Peter 2.9, through faith in Christ, we are all now part of a royal priesthood. Through Jesus, all believers are made kings descended from David and priests descended from Levi. And so this fulfills the promise of Jeremiah 33, 22, in which God promises David and the Levites that their seed will be increased and that their seed will outnumber the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. And so that wraps up this video on the topic of Mary and Jesus' Levitical heritage. I hope this video has been informative and have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye and God bless.